Well, welcome everybody to the Self-Self Dialogue on Sustainability uh, for the lecture series of 2022. Uh, this um, dialogue uh, is co-organized by the Global University for Sustainability, uh, Lingnan University, Arena, and Green Ground Ecotech Center. We started in 2020 after the convening of the seventh Safsaw Forum on Sustainability, and we had uh, two series of lectures in 2020, which were the first um, series of uh, Venezuela in Struggles, and also Michael Hudson's series on Global Financial Empire, the Political Economy of Globalization. Michael Hudson's series was edited with Chinese and English subtitles into 70 episodes and screened in China since uh, April last year. It will also come out as a book in English and Chinese and titled The Destiny of Civilization, Financial Capitalism, Industrial Capitalism or Socialism. Last year, on this same day, January the 20th, we started the second series of Venezuela in Struggles. This year, we are starting the first lecture series with experiences with indigenous communities in Chiapas, Cosmovision and Sustainability. And we are most honored to have Javier Vargas and Catherine Saib Vargas to be the speakers. We will be listening to them once a month for seven months. We have also two other series which are confirmed. One series is by Gustavo Esteva to reflect on modernity, development and education. And the other one is coordinated by Firoz Manji on Africa, colonialism and neocolonialism. And they will both start in March. Uh, the Global University is a community of activist scholars from dozens of countries. Apart from analyzing the crisis of the pandemic, financial domination, and ecological crisis, we hope to learn from self-managing local communities and promote networking for ecological and socio-economic sustainability. So once again, many thanks to our speakers today and to all of you for joining us. So back to the two moderators. Uh, we are most honored to have uh, Harvey Vargas and Kathy Vargas to be the speakers. And let me introduce them. Uh, Javier Vargas is psychologist and anthropologist, 50 years of experience and does Javier impact and leadership in the business and uh, social and educational fields, contributing to the creation of a culture that transcends and generates results of well-being. He currently works in educating, uh, educating Transform Us, creating innovative solutions for families and school and offering coaching to, com uh, to companies. For Harvey, what is transcendence is to recreate awareness and leadership through concrete and efficient actions. He is inspired to contribute to changes and transformations, promoting human potentials, sustainability, and collaborative work in networks locally and globally. And Kathy Vargas is leader in educational human and community development uh, projects in eight Latin American countries for more than 30 years with a Marilop based in New York. She is consultant in gender equality and uh, organizational development processes. She has been working for more than 15 years in the field of inclusion for people with disabilities with the State Council for People with Disabilities in Mexico and with the International Federation of La Carte France. She currently works in Educating Transforms Us uh, in the training and development of courses and diploma courses and uh, coaching in neurosemantics. On uh, 29th of June in 2021, in the webinar of the Excelsior Forum, Mexico Indigenous Mobilization during the 1960s to 70s, we had already listened to Javier and Kathy presentation on their experience with indigenous communities. In the next few months, we will continue to learn more from their experience in details. Thank you very much and please. Experiences con comunidades indígenas Experiences de with indigenous communities in Chiapas. Cosmovisión y sustentabilidad. 
worldview and sustainability. So, hola y buenas noches. Hello and good evening. Personas que nos escuchan en China. To everybody that is listening to us in China and good morning to those of you who are seeing us from this side of the globe. Our names are Kathy and Javier and we live in Mexico. In the year 1961, our big adventure began of sharing our lives with indigenous communities in, of Chiapas, Mexico. Chiapas is the southern state in Mexico and it, is, it borders with Guatemala. We initially reached, we initially got there as missionaries working with Don Samuel Ruiz García, who was Bishop of San Cristóbal de las Casas. Soy mexicano. I Javier, am Mexican, and I got there in 1961 to work. I arrived in Chiapas to work, and Kathy arrived from the United States in the year 1970. During these sessions with you, our intention is to offer you a testimony of our lived experiences, to re we reflect upon and make aware in a constant movement of transformation among the indigenous communities of Chiapas. These communities are grouped by their different languages, Saltal, Tzotzil, Tocolabal, and Chol. During the most recent years, our work has mainly focused on the Tzeltzal communities of the Lacandon jungle. Why are we doing this? Our objectives are important to our lives. What do we want? We want to value and to give back to the indigenous communities, mainly to the youth of these communities, all the lessons learned, the lessons that they have given us, and to contribute elements that join forces with others for the creation of sustainable civilizing models. This is not important and urgent to take responsibility for seeking and articulating substantial and unifying contributions that can make possible a change in our human behavior and attitude towards life. Yes, it is a time to exchange learn, lessons learned, resources, methods, and practices as assets of humanity for a sustainable, respectful, and dignified life for the well-being of everybody and of the whole planet. The experience that we gained in Chiapas has been significant and mainly has developed and transformed our conscience. And this conscience now asks um, and demands of us to recognize the magnitude uh, of excuse me, economic, uh, political. Es el efecto de una civilización violenta para casi todo el mundo. Es el triunfo de la especulación y la acumulación. This is the triumph of speculation and accumulation of wealth for money in very few hands. It is the increase of mass misery and marginalization of the planet. It is the destruction of the environment. And the dislocation of millions of migrants. It's the expansion of terrorism and organized crime destroying millions of lives in the social fabric, killing hope. Estamos ante un colapso civilizatorio. We are facing civilizatory collapse, civilizational collapse. And we are urged to find a new paradigm drawn from experience, processed by consciousness, and projected towards life. Hay un filósofo colombiano, Bernardo Toro, 
Y él dice que la sociedad a colonial philosopher, Bernardo Toro, who says that society requires a new ethical order. This is the paradigm cuidado. of care. He talks about the este paradigm of care. Orden ético This new ethical order saber hacer must know how to care, how to construct win-win transactions. Porque es para toda la sociedad, no es una cuestión de sectores. El cuidado, según Bernardo Toro, no es una opción. Care, according to Bernardo Toro, is not an option. Aprende a cuidar. Human beings o... learn to care or must learn to care or we shall perish. This paradigm of care today incluyente y ecosistémica. In implies an inclusive and ecosystemic dimension. It emerges as a new way of understanding and relating to each other. Species without distinction, that we are a unit which strives for collective well-being. Les presentamos ahora una experiencia que, es, que vivimos an experience, en el año de 1961. Esta experiencia tiene lugar en Chamula, This un poblado place in Chamula, de lengua tzotzil. Which is a tzotzil language speaking en el village. Centro ceremonial This event took place in the ceremonial center, which is the church and its main Veámoslo square. Ahora. The barrel organs are playing. They are the monkey men dressed in red and black, whose heads form a crest over the sky, made of monkey skin and topped with rainbow colored ribbons. They dance to the sound of guitars and the Mayan, the Mayan harps. They are the echo and the sound in an endless circle that means their union with the universe. Thousands of chamulas get together in the great plaza. Rockets rise to the sky, there's thunder, there's talk, while incense spreads like a sacred fragrance permeating the church, the atrium, the bodies, the clothes. A great adventure a great avenue opens up before the eyes of the whole community, presided over by their authorities with their commands, the machetic appear, capable of defying everything and dancing on the fire. They melt in the fire of the sun called Cajcal, which implies the light of life. They leave the feast of Tajimolkin, that is to say, the feast of the game. Everybody moves. The festival is presided over by Tultotik, that is to say, the sacred lord, the sun. The heat of this party is intense. There are tortillas, meat, beans, a lot of posh, that is um, a traditional liquor, and there is a market. The day goes by and the fiesta is fulfilled. It is lived. In the afternoon, the scenario is completely different. From the top, Don Samuel Ruiz Garcia, the Bishop of San Cristobal de las Casas, accompanied by three new missionaries, the Marist Brothers. We are all silent, contemplating the scene. Many people who take part in the party are already drunk in the ground. Some others are staggering or shouting, women, children, and adolescents are part of the ritual and they are sharing the intoxicating posh. The sounds of Bolonchong can still be heard throughout the mountains and you can see the serpentine stream of many chamulas walking back home. Don Samuel, coming out of his own silence, says, Brothers, this is our best start to learn how to be missionaries. My eyes could not believe what they were seeing. My mind could not understand what was going on. Don Samuel turned to me and said, 
Javier, I saw you were ast astonished. And I replied, it's true, I am. I can't understand how we are in front of a religious event and with all these people drunk. I understand absolutely nothing of what's going on here, let alone, I mean, understanding how I can, I can become a missionary. Don Samuel, with a deep look and a sincere word said, I don't understand either, but let's walk together. Let's observe and let's listen in order to learn. We were sent out to be missionaries, but we didn't know what our mission was all about. We were completely ignorant about it. So what is the mission? That episode served the function of positioning the missionaries as vulnerable people with no responses. It was a naked sense of powerlessness, not knowing, not understanding, and the challenge of trying to find a way to operate with a meaningful way, like coherent way. But as a matter of fact, there was no clarity. There was no direction. There was only astonishment. It was the beginning of many questions that were the drive, the ongoing drive, in order to know that the mission was to learn. As it could be seen by means of this experience in Chamula with Don Samuel, we realized very soon about our cultural ignorance, about our blindness, deafness, in order to see and understand what we saw, what we, what we heard, what we smelled, what we felt. Our main task was to learn, but with different codes that, did not, that we did not have. So the learning that awaited us was long, it was deep, and it was going to demand from us a whole transformation of our consciousness, and it would last for our whole lives. That's why we need to find a new understanding of consciousness. It is from our consciousness that we analyze what we've learned and that we can give a testimony that we would like to share with you now. It has been a process that has led us to link the indigenous cosmovision with the advances of modern science, leading us towards a unity, the unity of the whole. We are one. In the words of Albert Einstein, a human being is part of the whole, of the totality called by us the universe, each being a limited part in both time and space. The person experiences himself, herself, as something separate from the rest, as a kind of optical delusion of your own consciousness. Our task, therefore, is to free ourselves from this prison, expanding our circle of compassion in order to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in all its beauty. Those were the words of Albert Einstein. Consciousness, according to the thinking of Pierre Teilhard du Chardin, who was a Jesuit paleontologist who worked 20, for 26 years in the deserts of China, Everything is understood as part of evolution, which seems to be an immense complexification of the psychic energy. It is claimed that the human person is integrally part of evolution because we emerge out of the same process. Mr. Taylor defines reflection as the power acquired by the consciousness to enter into itself and to possess itself as an object. It is no longer just to know, but to know what you know. So he quotes Julian Huxley later on saying, the human person is nothing other than the evolution that becomes conscious of itself. Therefore, consciousness emerges and blends into the process of evolution. 
the human person is the point of emergence in nature where deep cosmic evolution culminates and can express itself. Precisely so, in order to describe our experience, our learnings in the indigenous communities of Chiapas, we've chosen an image. You can see it here. It is called the 13 moons and the awakening of the awakening of consciousness. From this image, we are going to break down different understandings and different practices of the life in the community, their cosmovision, and their search for sustainability. We understand the process that we experienced in Chiapas shows that all transformation of peoples lies, first of all, in the transformation of the meaning, the beliefs, and the practices that emerge through the awareness raising. So next, we would like to present the topics that we are going to address address now, the 13, the 13 moons of the awakening of consciousness. So the first one we're going to talk about is the hidden consciousness of cosmic connection. Then we will go to the community cultural awareness, customs and practices, traditions, Third, consciousness of the sacred and the obedience to the community mandate. Fourth, consciousness of including new capacities, new abilities and skills. Five, consciousness of indigenous identity in the face of the dominant culture. Then, the consciousness about the common good as a practice in the communities. Number seven, the consciousness to serve and to enhance the word of the community. Next, the consciousness of the historical contributions, the word and the dignity of the indigenous peoples. Then, collective consciousness of the indigenous rights and of the human rights. Consciousness of unity among indigenous peoples. And also the consciousness of being organized communities with clear purposes. The cosmic consciousness of transcending and contributing. And finally, the consciousness and the required practices in the face of the current challenges. So after having made this introduction, we will start with the first aspect that we are going to address, which is the 13 moons of awakening of our consciousness. So let's start by listening to the sound of the snail. This is something that is very frequently used in the communities whenever there is an important event they call for the whole community and they call them by the sound of the snail, which is very beautiful and very strong. So listen to it yourselves so that we can start and to be called, all of you as well, to this meeting. So keep in mind this idea of awakening your consciousness as well. With your spiral that touches infinity, you are the sacred expression of the wind. 
your sound is a voice that summons a community. You are the energy, the interior connection that helps us to interpret the messages from the universe that you have prepared for us. The snail, an expression of spirituality through knowledge, acceptance, and the cultivation of the spirit, consciousness of the whole, what we see and what we do not see, voice in our heart. Let us respond to the spirit of the wind, of the snail, walking down the path of hidden consciousness. The hidden consciousness of the cosmic connection. This is our first theme, and we are going to start now. Now we will remember an event flying through the Lakandon jungle in a Cessna 180 light aircraft. The pilot, Betija, said, look, Kathy, and tilting the aircraft 45 degrees, he showed me the archaeological site of Santa Lucia, hidden almost completely in the dense jungle. In another close place near the town of Ocosingo stands the majestic archaeological site of Tonina. Tonina is the highest of the Mayan pyramids with an altitude of 70 meters. And this beauty was hidden, remained hidden until 1960, as if it were a hill extended in the valley. In Chiapas, there are over 40,000 hidden archaeological sites that have not yet been explored. Of these, 3,000 are recorded, registered, and only a dozen are open to the public. Toniná, Chapa de Corso, Palenque, Bonampac, Yaxilán, Izapa, Chincultic, Tenampuente, and Lagartero. These figures have been released, been made known by Emiliano Garliaga Murrieta, who is delegate of the National Institute of Anthropology and History in Chiapas. The Mayan architectural cultural wealth of pyramids and large beautiful cities is largely unexplored. In addition to Chiapas, it extends in Mexico to the southeastern states of Yucatan, Quintana Roo, and Campeche. There is also great Mayan wealth in the neighboring countries of Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Belize. Los calendarios y las lunas maya. Okay, so the calendars and the 13 Mayan moons. So let's pause now. Let's breathe. Let's breathe deeply in and out. Let's feel. Let's live and reflect. Let's take a time, a second of silence. Let's integrate in our own being what we've seen and what we've heard in the first part of this session, which is to discover the mysteries of Chichen Itza which implies going deeper into our own consciousness. The experience of entering Chichen Itza has led us to discover the, the hidden secrets that were hidden for centuries in the Mayan archeology span and its codes. So now, Imagine what we are about to discover now, the wonders of the calendars of the 13 Mayan moons. Now, remember that the intention, the goal of this journey 
has a purpose, which is the emergence of consciousness and the transformations that it will bring along. With the following words, we shall begin the exploration of this first session. Just as the air is the atmosphere of our bodies, time is the atmosphere of our minds. If the time in which we live is made up of irregular months and days, regulated by minutes, by mechanized minutes and hours, that's what our mind becomes, a mechanized irregularity. Since everything is a consequence of the mind, it is not surprising that the atmosphere where we live on our daily basis is becoming more and more polluted. And the biggest complaint is I don't have enough time. He who owns your time owns your mind. Therefore, own your own time and you will know your own mind. Jose Arguelles. Our lives seem to be marked by a variable that is increasingly more difficult to manage, time. Wise men say that we are not synchronized with the natural rhythms of our planet. Is that why we are not evolving as mankind? Can that be the reason for the multiple conflicts that are currently affecting the whole world? For the Mayans, the answer is yes, yes. It is true, yes, we are far from the natural rhythms of our planet. The Mayans lived and currently live in harmony with nature knowing from their childhood their mission in life. The Mayans developed 17 calendars with a very diff different conception of time, understanding of time. We will focus on one of them later on, called the Tzolkin calendar. So, first, Let's have a look at the most widely used calendar in the world, which is the Gregorian calendar. It was formalized in 1572 by a decree of Pope Gregory the 13th. Matter of fact, it is an adaptation of a calendar that originated when mankind settled down with agriculture, that is to say, from 5,000 to 3,000 years before Christ. It began in Middle East when this male priest took power. This is a solar calendar, a sun calendar, and it was imposed because the male power wanted to have control and to dominate the territories, the properties, and the people themselves. There is no logical or scientific reason between the exact length of a year and the use of the Gregorian calendar in order to divide and to measure the length of a year. As a matter of fact, that calendar uses an arbitrary division to assign four months of 30 days, seven months of 31 days, and one month of 28 days, which every four years, that is like February, takes an extra day, 29 days. Therefore, understanding the world and this approach, approach to time emphasizes placing money as the highest value in life with phrases such as time is money or time is gold, creating banking systems, taxes, and at the same time, legal loopholes in order to favor those who already have most money and power. The Gregorian calendar has been upheld by those who dominate the economic, cultural, social, and religious spheres who defend their own interests and privileges. It has fostered beliefs that for centuries have been taboo. For example, number 13, bad luck. 
that was associated with witchcraft, with the devil, the devil by the Europeans when they arrived in the New World. Why? Because they were faced with a culture that was very much enlightened in astronomy and who knew how to manage time from the point of view of nature, the stars, based on the 13 moons. So challenging the culture and the science and the power of the colonizers. That's why Let's have a look now at the 17, well, as a matter of fact, we're not going to see the 17 calendars. I mean, the Mayas created 17 calendars. Out of those, there are three that are the main ones. One that is called Hub, and which lasts 365 days. Another one that is called Solkin and lasts 206 and 60 days. And the other one is called La Cuenta Larga, or the Long Count. So now we're going to see an image of the 13 lunations. So we will see here the core of what we saw before, the Hunabku, that is at the core of the Tzolkin, that is the one that gives origin to the biological life beyond the sun. That's the galactic core that describes the purpose and the activity of everything. So this movement is hand in hand with energy and there is periodicity and the shape. Mayans knew the astronomic movements and they knew about the energy and energies and the cycles that had an influence on the Earth coming from the cosmos and thus marking their lives. Their calendars have great accuracy and connectivity to the whole. So they discovered without the use of telescope that every year of 365 days has 13 lunations or moon cycles of 28 days each, which has currently been uh, verified by quantum science as well. So let's have a look at this, this same image, but now adding an extra circle. So we're going to see that number 13 is actually the key for the Mayan galactic codes. So have a look at the white cir cir circle that we've just added. So in Mayan numerology, it shows the numbers from 1 to 13. The points or units or lines are the ones that show the numbers. The point implies 1, the line implies 5. And subsequently like that, you can be able to see how the cycles look like. So you can see at the top, the number 1, and moving to the left, two, next one to the left, three, next one to the left, four, and then a line which represents five, then line plus a dot, six, etc. cetera, uh, seven, eight, nine, then you can see two lines for 10, 11, two lines plus one dot, and subsequently like that until you get to 13 and you go back to number one. So that's the cycle. Now, the external cycle, you can see it's colored and it has the 20 seals that give the idea of the moon and the sun cycles and it is the base for all fertility, both for human, animal and plant life. So now we're going to see what's called the Salkin Synchronarium. The Synchronarium is this image that we can see here. It's actually two images. I mean, because there is an explanation of how it works. So for Mayans, the Salkin Synchronarium is the sacred cycle or, or the ordered count of days with a total amount of 260. 
So that was the most important calendar out of the 17 that they had. This synchronarium gives us information about the different energies for daily life with a cosmic and a spiritual side to it. So it is a daily guide for the use of all human beings. There are 20 items and the talking that you can see there in colors. On the left, you can see the codes, the color codes, and there are also 13 expressions that you can see in the main columns that you can see on your left. They describe the energies of the universe, which actually are forces, the main forces that prevail over nature and that guide our life. In the talking, there are 13 groups of 20 or 20 group of 13, according to what you want to look at it, um, given a total of 260 combinations, that is 260 days for that sulking ideology. So the essence, its spiritual essence, comes when understanding each of its parts in the combination with the different colors day by day. This synchronarium can be seen here. I mean, you can see it here in this image. It is based on the sun and on the moon. So you have two dimensions. You have 13 columns of 20 each. So as you, and you can see it here in this image, but on the left, you can see the seals or the galactic signatures, which are the ones that give the sun energy. And at the bottom, you have the moon energies that are called vibrations or tones. Every day has one kin or one seal. That kin seal is given by the sun and there is an harmonic tone given by the moon. And those vibrations or tones I mean, the sun gives the kin and the moon gives the tone. So if we, if we were going to analyze this as an aerial view, it will look like the Mayan pyramid that you can see here in the middle uh, of the screen right now, in the middle of the two expressions of the soul king. And also, can you go back? We can see how they are repeated from the bottom to the lower part, numbers 1 to 13, and they are repeated and repeated until they fill up the 260 little frames. And if we were to see it from the top, we can see the pyramid that appeared in the middle of our image as if it were an aerial view of the Sorkin. There you can see the mathematics of everything. The frequencies, the 1320 frequencies, are the key numerals of the Solkin that act upon the human being and nature. Solkin is adjusted to the human biorhythm, for example, pregnancy period of a woman is one solkin, nine months. In the same way, crops and harvests and all the moon cycles are adjusted to the solkin. The seals and tones are coordinated with the movements and the galactic forces. They are expressed materially and symbolically in the human person because the number 20, which is the basis of Mayan mathematics, is the number of fingers that we have in our hands and toes. Number 13 refers to the 13 joints in our body. We have one in our neck, two shoulders, two elbows, two wrists, two in our hips, 
to knees and to ankles. This makes up a total of 13 joints. This is why the key of this is the relationship between 13 and 20. That is, the Mayan system reflects and is based on the human person, but in its relationship with the celestial objects and with nature. The foundation of Mayan numerology, so that we become a little bit more familiar with it, is here represented. In the first place, we have the zero. The Mayans discovered the zero and they expressed it as a snail in the shape, sorry, not as a snail, but as, as, a, as a conch. And then we, the number one, two, three, four appear. The five is the line, as we mentioned before. The six, seven, eight, nine are combinations of dots and lines. The dots on top of the lines, they go up to the nine. And 10 is two lines. And it continues like this up to the number 19. And here is a representation of this numerology. So we become familiar it because with it, because Mayan numerology is a, the references are the zero, the point, and the line, the five as a line for its representation. When they have larger numbers, they generate new levels, and this is repeated exponentially as the numbers increase. And this is because the Solkin is an energetic model, is a fractal energetic model. It changes in relation to dimensions. It is essentially spiritual and it shows us something elaborated from the movements of the sun and the moon. Studying this helps us give meaning and, and significance of everything that we are and also what happens to us during our growth process. The path of internal knowledge is the journey that goes from the unconscious or the subconscious to the conscious. And the Solkin is the guide of this journey with its seals and its tones for each day. Mayans felt that they were like a living being joined with the rest of creation. And this produced in them the spirit in a state of sensitivity towards the whole. They were respectful. They had, they showed care. This can only, could only lead to common good. This increases the connection, intuition and empathy of one among each other, the appearance of the collective mind and harmony, which are the purpose of the universe, of the conscious universe. This spiritual guide of Solkin still lives, lives on and is expressed in the cultures of the indigenous communities in all the middle American region in their rituals and in their relationships. Our kin is our Mayan seal or our galactic signature, as you can see here in this image. It contributes vital energy that enables us to know each other better and to become aware of the mental programs that influence our vital experience on a daily basis. The 20 kins that have different colors, as you can see here on the screen, in this image, the 20 kins allow our minds to be in harmony with the cyclic and natural energy. Also, each one of the kins that appear in the calendar has a color. This shows the strength of the four planetary elements, water, earth, fire, and air. Now we're going to look at the harmonic tones, which are vibrations given by the moon, and they are 13. These 13 have their particular pulse, and they are named in the following way, as you can see here on the screen. Number one, magnetic, two, loon from 
coming from the moon or lunar, electric, self-existent, toned, rhythmical, res resonating, galactic, solar, planetary, spectral, crystal, and the last one is the harmonic cosmic tone. And this is similar to music. As an analogy, we can use music. Music has different tones. They're all sounds, but they're different vibrations. They produce different effects. That is what this relationship of these tones does on our lives. Let's move to the next slide, to the next point now, which is to ask ourselves, the live solkin, or the live solkin in Mayan communities today, the 13 moons, let's ask ourselves, is this just a theory or is this something that lives on among the Mayan communities today? Yes, we would like to present to you, we would like to introduce to you, I'm sorry, Susana. Susana is an indigenous from Ocosingo, Chiapas in the Lacandon jungle. And we are now going to give her, give you her testimony about the meaning of, of moons in her daily life and in her community. Susana Hon, Talemonta, Chiapas. Ocosingo. Here. Here it says to us, the moon teaches us, it talks to us. My name is Susana Cruz. I'm from Chiapas. I am from the Lagandon jungle. And I'm going to give you the meaning of moons to us. The moon teaches us. It speaks to us through different signs that are important to us in order to see and to understand. To follow the moon upholds life. We harvest in the full moon, mainly corn, beans, and rice, which are the foundations of our lives. If, you do not, if we do not do it like this, the plant will not have strength, it will not have a good root, and it will give, it will not yield good fruit. During the growing moon, we harvest other foods, such as carrots and other vegetables. This is why I say that we follow the moon in all its phases, in during the full moon, during a half moon and quarter moon, we could not live without following the moon. This is the testimony of Susana. Now I would like to introduce you to another friend. His name is Miguel, Miguel Ruiz. And he is from Chiapas. He's also Celtal Maya. Let's see what Miguel Ruiz says. We must obey the moon. It is our guide for life. It is the source of our livelihood, and this is why we respect it. My father knows the prayers in my Celtal language in order to pray to the moon with offerings of candles, flowers, and of drink so that it will listen to our pleas for food and for health. Now, coming back to what we saw before, we would like to reflect a bit on our previous remarks. When we started this presentation, we saw the episode of Carnival in Chamula in 1962, when we were with our dear friend, Don Samuel Ruiz Garcia, who was Bishop of San Cristobal de las Casas. During that moment, we, were, we lived vulnerability, impotence, and ignorance, facing the challenge of understanding and trying to understand our purpose and what we were supposed to do with meaning. And Don Samuel's very humble phrase when he saw the stage was, I don't understand it either. 
And that was when he launched us into learning with him and with the communities. And today, today, January 20th, 2022, 60 years later, we are sharing with you that which we are still learning. The cosmic history and the 13 moon synchronarium create a synchronicity, a description of the process of consciousness. The purpose of cosmic history is the evolution of consciousness. In this evolution of consciousness, it, this, the human species is completely transformed. The synchronarium of 28 day moons is the instrument that creates the fundamental transformation of consciousness by placing a harmonic radial matrix at the basis of our mind. This will ultimately take us to a collective consciousness and mind unified consciousness and mind. The 28-day 13-moon synchronarium is, if we want, the harmonic software that shifts our minds towards the 1320 frequency of synchronization and also of nature. On this basis, it is possible Certain reformulations of the human mind might occur at a mass level. Therefore, the Gregorian calendar prevents us from experiencing this. Up to now, human history is the development of materialism that has created a technosphere with the artificial apparatus that is, refers only to materialism. The 13 moon synchronarium represents opening up to a new reality that enables opening up to a new, a radically new knowledge for humanity. This first session that we are having with you today and we are pleased to have today has to do with the subconscious the hidden consciousness that opens up our minds to understand that we are in the correct moment to act and to fulfill our purpose in life. We are aligned with our own seals and tones in order to become fully who we are in evolution. This first session also reveals that this Solkin is the contribution of a search of a quantic essence to understand our connection with nature and with the universe. This is a guide, an ethical, moral, professional guide that illuminates human behavior. It is an expansion and an expression that is useful and aesthetic in relation to the universe or our cosmic consciousness. And this is what we have wanted to share with you today, dear friends, in this reflection today. Now, we're going to chant It was created in 1961 in the Lacandone area. And you have the text there to see it both in the Tzetal language as well as in, in Spanish in this case. So there's the song. Here we go. Aina nisha te kushleha, matwa yumpin chikana. Aina nisha te kushleha, yun chulel kushun 
Kusul dan istukes. Kusul, kusul, kusul. Tajue yutesko, las kusantes te vintikai. Tajue yutesko, las kusantes te vintikai. Te shoho vintikinar, hanishish. Te como un atletic, cushul, cushul, cushul. Mato yo vinci cana, hay una misa te cuchleja. Mato yo vinci cana, hay una misa te cuchleja. Yo chule, cushul na listo que. Yunschulen, kushul nanistukel, kushul, kushul, kushul. Thank you so much. So now we will open up the floor for any questions or any comments that may arise. So I give the floor back to our coordinators. Thank you so much.